So, um, Tracy, first ever internal truck parking club company interview. Um, why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself and how long you've been with the company and what your role is. Great. Well, hello, Reed. My name is Tracy Allen, and I started with Trucking Club as the first employee back in, oh, we can't decide on the date. It was either February or March 2023. Those types of things weren't really concerning to us at the time. So we can't figure out a date. We chose our actual start date as March 1st, but I believe I was here before. I became an employee because I was one of the first clients of truckparkingclub.com. I needed to find a parking space outside Atlanta so I can drop my trailer to pick up, go pick up a repower unit that was going to pay me as an owner operator two or three times what my normal rate is. It was a repower deal. So I was looking outside Atlanta so I didn't have to go through Atlanta. That would be the best spot. I wound up checking at the Loves to see if I could drop a trailer. Or I was checking at the Freightliner, see if I could just drop it. I paid for it. I found nothing. It took me hours, but I actually found this obscure article that was talking about Truck Parking Club. I, I went on to Truck Parking Club. It looked really sketchy. I called the telephone number. I had no answer. It was going to cost me $25 a day, and I needed four days to, you know, to lock down my trailer so I can go get this load. And I said, you know what? It's worth it. It's just worth it because if this pays off, then I can go get this repower unit. It's going to be worth it in my pocket. I, I, uh, you know, I made the booking online. It was really sketchy. And uh, I guess it was an hour later, I get a phone call from Evan. Uh, I had no idea who he was. He said it was a, a new site and he was really glad I was here. And I had a text to his personal cell phone, my vehicle information. Uh, I told him outright, I said, you know, I was really scared. This site is really sketchy. You know, what's going on with this? But it was worth the risk for me. Um, and he listened to my feedback and called me several times thereafter to get feedback. And uh, he asked me to work for him. And I was amazed that this, here's this guy that I've never met, you know, booked through the site and he started this new business and just wanted me to, to work for him. So what do you want me to do? He says, I want you to answer the phone. I said, okay called me the, I guess it was a day or two ahead of time. He goes, you're ready to do this? I said, yep. So he set me up with my phone number so I could answer the truck parking club line. And I said, how do I do it? And my training was, well, answer the phone and handle it. I said, okay, that's great training. Thanks. Got it. I was so, amazed. Oh, go ahead. So you were, so, okay. So you, you needed a place to stash a trailer. You found us through an article. You found truck parking club through an article. Um, you did, you, you managed to figure it out. You got the trailer dropped. It worked out. And then Evan hit you up and was like, Hey, do you want to come work here? What, so to that point, you, how, how long had you been a driver? Um, what was your experience like on the road? That sort of stuff. Did you ever, did you ever think that you would be, um, no longer a driver and working for, working for a, a tech company like this? Well, working for a tech company, no. Um, but I've had my license uh, for over 33 years. Um, I never went to college, unfortunately. And as a result, my income was lacking, although I, I, I leaned towards the professional. And this truck driver cut me off. He was coming onto an on-ramp, didn't see me, wound up cutting me off, had to go in the other lane. I was so angry. And at the time, the feminist in me started to cuss and swear and said, I can't believe that guy makes more money than me. And it dawned on me, wait a minute, wait a minute, I could do what he's doing. If I could do what I do, I could do that. And I went and got my license. And it has supported me throughout my entire lifetime. Have I done it straight for 33 years? No, I have not. Um, but when I need to make money, I utilize it. And I'm really good at it. Um, but it is a tough lifestyle. And being a mother, being a wife, taking care of home, kids, so on and so forth, trucking is almost impossible to do it long term. Mm -hmm. So I've worked at various places, but always turned back to trucking to make sure that my income was sustainable. And so what, um, so you started driving 33 years ago and were you, were you doing OTR? What, um, kind of what have your roles looked like in, in the driver's seat? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I was, I started as, um, local kind of regional, I would say, 
way back then, uh, over the road, owner operator, company driver, tanker driver, flatbed driver. Um, I've done it all in the industry. It depends on what suits my needs at the time. Obviously, I couldn't do OTR until uh, my daughter was grown up, but um, it's just something that you have to do. I did team, solo, uh, whatever you need, I've, I've done it. Mm -hmm. And what, um, I, I guess, what was your what was your favorite part about just the job in general, being a driver? Um, well, favorite part about it. Geez, that's a really good, I never really thought about it. Well, there is a, a certain amount of freedom, right? Uh, which I like the owner operator aspect a lot better. The freedom to choose a load, the freedom not to choose a load. I like the freedom of making my own route. I like the freedom of, hey, I want to stop. I'm a rock fanatic. I love rocks out in Arizona. Um, oh, I forget where it is, but there's this rock shop that I like to stop at. So I'd route myself through there, which was pretty cool. So I like that freedom. When you're with a company, that's not always the same. And I also like being owner operator because I could choose my truck, not having the Bendex, you know, the um, the system, you know, the system that'll break for you, the mm -hmm. Bendex system, you know, the the safety systems that shut your truck down or they beep because the lane departure system, that kind of stuff. You, as an owner operator, you could choose that. And so on and so forth. But then there's a, the down parts of the owner operator. You've got to do all your receipts, all your taxes, all your this, all your that. So there's mm -hmm. there's trades. But I really enjoyed the owner operator port because it gave me the control that I and the freedom that I wanted. What? Um, okay. So and you were an owner operator at the time when you discovered Truck Parking Club, and then you got hired, and then you were you when you took the job. Were how long after you took the job were you? like bought into this idea of kind of going full force with truck parking club and kind of temporarily, if not forever, I don't know what, who, who knows what the future holds, but like, were, were you, were you bought in immediately? Did Evan have to convince you? Um, how did that process work? Oh goodness. No, he didn't have to buy me into anything. I was sold the minute I found truck parking club. Right, uh, big and anybody driving on the road, I hated parking like on a highway. I'm scared to death somebody's gonna hit me. I'm scared to death somebody's gonna get hurt. I, I'm, I'm a very safe driver because I realize you're driving a missile down the road and I wouldn't want my minivan with kids being hit by a missile. Mm -hmm. That's not okay to me. So I, they call me granny panties driving down the road because I was slow as molasses. And that's just the way it was. I was in no hurry, <laughs> mm -hmm. never got a speeding ticket. So, no, Evan sold me from day one, um, just finding Truck Parking Club. I was sold, and I bought into it. Um, I am a lifelong fan from the moment I saw it. Mm -hmm. And I was sold on Truck Parking Club being the place that I can retire from, coming off the road 100%, never going back to it because of the leader that we have. Evan has a heart. He doesn't run Truck Parking Club like any other corporation in the world. He runs it from the aspect of what's right to do. And according to Evan, and according to everything that we've ever done here, you do the right thing all the time. I don't know where you could go and find that. Always do the yeah. right thing. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. That right there is powerful. I buy into that. I believe in that. So you, okay, so you, you come off the road, you start answering the phones. And how how long, how much time passed between when you were the only one answering the phones to, you? okay, now I need to start hiring folks. Now I need to start thinking about setting up a team. Now I need to start thinking about processes and all and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that was that was that was challenging. Um, Evan and I, when we first started, because I was the first employee, we had feedback quite a bit. Um, I said, Evan, like, how is this supposed to work? Am I supposed to not answer it? Like, what, what are the hours? And he said, oh, yeah, like at 10 o'clock at night, don't answer. I said, you're nuts, man. This is a trucking company. You have to answer when the guy calls at 2 o'clock in the morning. So mm -hmm. he said, if you think you could do it, do it. So I did 24-7 uh, straight for four months and then hired a first employee. And that's how long it was before we got off the ground. Now, mind you, my first week I got six phone calls, but it, mm -hmm. it has never been decreased since then and has only increased and now we have a staff of uh 12 in this department and we only staff former drivers 
And so talk, talk about that. Like, did you, was there ever a doubt that you would only hire drivers or, or did you ever consider hiring um, non-drivers for these sorts of like frontline support, answering the phone, dealing with issues, et cetera? Well, like I said, way in the beginning, when Evan had first hired me, we had a lot of feedback to each other of how the foundation that we both wanted to create it. He kind of let me in to create the foundation, which was nice. Mm-hmm. And we talked about how drivers understand what drivers go through, right? Now, you know that there's terminology in the trucking industry, kingpin, you know, you've got your um, differentials, you, you you know, you've got your airlines, you've got your glad hand. Uh, there's so many different lingo, even deadhead. Right now, I can't take a bank teller or somebody who's good in customer service talking to a truck driver who's talking truck driver lingo. That isn't going to work. And Evan and I talked about it that whoever would be hired, it would be a trucker or a very experienced dispatcher. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we got to the point where we weren't even going to hire dispatchers because they did not have the experience of what it's like to be driving around at two o'clock in the morning going through a truck stop trying to find a parking spot. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have that empathy that we need in this department to do the right thing at all mm-hmm. times. And and so since so since you hired that first person, you know, a handful of months after you started, I mean, how many people have you hired since then? How has it been like building the team? Like what what um, you know, obviously you're doing something brand new. You're no longer a driver now. You're managing people and now. You're dealing with customer service like. What have you had to do to kind of like learn how to do that and set up all the processes that it takes to to, have a team and to have employees and to deal with issues, et cetera? Absolutely. Um, Well, as we were growing, the processes were created because you have to remember just because we had a process down does not mean that the process didn't change the day after. The Mm -hmm. nice thing about Truck Parking Club for a driver is we're constantly improving. That's tough to handle on customer service side because the things that we were trained on yesterday and had processes for is not the same. Mm -hmm. So what we do to combat that, and you have to understand, everyone works remotely. We do not have a building where we all see each other. Mm -hmm. So I have have somebody out in Oklahoma, somebody in Utah, somebody in Pennsylvania, Carolina, we're all over the map, right? So what we do is we have meetings regularly, uh, once per week, two two hours long, we, we discuss tech issues, or whatever things came up that are new, or how can we improve this, or how can we improve that? So the answer to that question, how you build a team, is pretty much communication, uh, growth, getting a standard. Um, And then, like I said, our team is, they were hired because of their heart, not necessarily their pedigree. And they understand the driver, and they're going to do the right thing. Even if my systems at this point are not necessarily perfect, my processes aren't perfect, that driver is going to be taken care of. We do worry about the processes, but our priority is taking care of the driver's issue. And that's, that's as long as we keep that as our North Star, I believe we can handle everything on the back end as far as the systems are concerned and the training is concerned. So uh, walk me through a typical, like a typical issue that you might see day to day. Um, somebody calls in with, you know, what, whatever the issue might be. Like, how do you, how do y'all handle it? What um, is, is there anything, you know, kind of out of the or any stories that stick out where um, you, you helped kind of resolve an issue and we got somebody parts where if we didn't exist, if truck park club didn't exist, like they would have been kind of SOL, if you will. Wow. Well, um... That's a that's a really great question. I really got to go through my memory bank. I have a thousand and one stories um, of drivers that that where Truck Parking Club has helped. Um, I think we're invaluable. And you know, the, I got to tell you, I wish Truck Parking Club the way it is today exists when I was driving. Life would be a lot easier. That's the first and foremost. And I believe your other question. What was your other question? I missed it now. Oh, a one a typical thing, a typical thing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So a typical thing, I guess, would be uh, maybe a gate code. Um, uh, the most typical, fo- let me start with the most typical phone call we get. Hey, uh, you know, I'm going through um, Amarillo, uh, Texas. Is there any parking available there? 
that's our most typical typical call where we're making our drivers familiar with truck parking club the next one i guess would be our top two would be hey we're having a little issue getting signed up can you help us mm -hmm. our our reps will actually walk them through it but then we get into the little more technical issues where god forbid a property member happens to change his gate code and forgot to tell us then we have a driver who shows up he calls here we get that gate code immediately and try to get him in um, so that doesn't happen. We try to educate our property members so it doesn't happen again, um, which is another side to the coin. Um, so those are the typical things. But we get down to issues where we help drivers with absolutely crazy stuff. So stuff that really has nothing to do with truck parking club. For example, a driver hits a gate um, at a location. We as truck parking club, because the drivers are client, because the property members are client, we act as a mediator to ensure the gate gets fixed, goes through insurance or doesn't go through insurance, however the case may be. And we'll work on that process for days to make sure that it's resolved. Um, so you get that kind of protection as well, like we're your advocate to try to get things resolved as fast as possible. Um, the stories that I could tell you, I can tell you that we have a ginormous heart here. So God forbid there's an emergency where you need truck parking uh, because our family member's been hurt or injured or what have you, we're gonna take care of you. Ma'am, we're gonna bend over backwards to get you home. We're gonna do anything that we can, um, even if we have to uh, call someone ourselves just to find you a place to put that, because we're gonna help the driver. We're not in it just for the truck parking, we're in it to help the driver. We often have people call here looking for like a repair shop number because if you Google, you know, truck anything, truck parking club pops up, which is great, but we get those phone calls. Hey, I'm looking for the repair shop. Is this the Love's repair shop? No, mm -hmm. but we'll get you that number. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So we go out of our way to help the driver. So the, the questions that we have, we have a thousand and one scenarios and we're learning off of each one because um, there's still some that are new to us. We had an incident, um, I don't know if you want to hear about that one, about a hazmat incident. I don't know if yeah. you can hear that. Yeah, yeah, do it. Okay, we had, um, it was a, a driver that was working for a company and decided to quit the company and the trailer was abandoned. Property member goes out, now we, we did not know because we don't have boots on the ground, but the property member goes out and opens the back of the container and inside is hazmat materials or materials that have big warning labels that said do not let the you know this material get over 106 degrees it's in a box trailer 53 foot long you know in california in the summer mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's already been sitting there a month so now we have a problem because that could be hazardous not only for the property number not for the drivers but for the community at large Immediately, we jumped on the phone with a hazmat team to come over and check that load to see if it was stable to ensure the safety of other drivers in the community. Hazmat checked it out. The stability was good. And we were able to work with the owner who also was not aware that trailer was there and get it scheduled and get the load delivered and make sure everybody was safe in the process. And that's the kind of things that Truck Parking Club will look out for. That the property member may not have really understood the potential hazardous, hazardous um, mm -hmm. situation he was in so we kind of lend hands um which is really great i think that's just the benefit that you get being a member are you so in your experience as a driver how just in your day-to-day -day, like you know we we all anyone who's in the industry whether you're a driver or a broker or whoever or a shipper you know that stuff happens and there are issues all the time and they're often difficult to predict how often do you think you were able to ever you know, you have an issue, how often do you think you were able to pick up the phone and immediately kind of talk to somebody who helps you solve issues? Are you talking about our clients calling here or if I call somebody just, just to try in, to get just a resolution? In, just in general, because I think, I, I guess I'm kind of what I'm getting at is like in my experience as a broker, like I've never been a driver, but as a broker, I basically just assumed that I'd have to make, you know, a dozen phone calls before I reach somebody who's actually able to help me with whatever issue I'm dealing with. Like, That's and in and, and, and the experience that we've set up here and you've built out, you know, in your team is basically just a one-stop shop. All of your issues are solved to the best of our ability with one phone call. And I feel like drivers probably aren't used to that sort of thing. They aren't. They aren't. I have to tell you that my best, most loyal, 
um, big fans of Truck Parking Club are people that experienced issues on the ground and were amazed that we were able to with, first of all, when you call my telephone number, there is no automation. There is no press one, no press two, not, you know, press this for this language, none of that. You talk to a human being. The only time you don't talk to a human being is when I have, you know, like four people on and four phone calls coming at once. Unfortunately, I can't staff for every phone call. So the call is missed and, and a text message goes out, says we're going to call you right back. We're on the phone with another driver. First person to hang up that phone calls you immediately and we work on your issue. That is our automation. That's it. And we, we try to do a one-stop uh, resolution. A lot of times we can't, but we call you back, follow up. Um, and we don't close the issue until it's finished all the way, which is really nice. And drivers, like I said, drivers that have had issues and experienced that have become my biggest fans. What? Um, so I'm assuming you've, you know, in your in your time here, you've also received phone calls from folks who maybe haven't booked with us, but maybe have an opinion about what we're doing. You know, maybe even negative. Um, how, how have you handled? you know, talking to folks who maybe don't like the idea of paid parking or um, don't like the idea of what we're doing? Well, okay. Uh, I don't see Truck Parking Club as being just a paid thing. I see Truck Parking Club as being a club and a membership. So if a customer does call me with a complaint about Truck Parking Club, paid parking, or having to pay to park, or any of those things, First thing I try to do is I understand why he's saying that. What predicament are you in where this is bad? Um, the most common reply I get is because it hurts my wallet. You know, that everybody has their hands into the wallet of the trucker. And, you know, being an owner operator, I agree. I agree 900%. There are too many fees, different things that are associated with uh, driving that it seems everybody has their hand out. I don't see Truck Parking Club as one of those. I see Truck Park Parking Club providing value. Let me explain to you why it provides value. Um, when you go into a truck stop, now uh, you said you, you weren't a trucker, but other truckers out there will certainly understand that. So you go through the fuel lines, you get your dinner for the night, you know, go to the bathroom, take your shower, whatever you got to do, right? You go from the fuel lines, you go to the parking lot, and there's a newbie, a rookie, who's backing up. And he's going to take 45 minutes to back up. But there's no way around that circle. <laughs> you just got to sit there and wait. So that you've just wasted 45 minutes of your time. Now, how much is 45 minutes of your time worth? How much is it in fuel you just wasted? Uh, and, the, so, and you're still not even parked yet. You're just sitting there waiting. So the way I see it, when you use a truck parking love location, yeah, it pays 20 to $25. But okay, hey, you're there. You're parked. You're in. There's no wait. No, no fuss. No muss. Done. That's one way to combat it. Two, when it comes to paid parking at like when they have to do at, at a truck stop, for example, I understand how the driver feels that truck stops. Um, well, well, truck stops, they think the truck stop should offer free parking because the amount of money. And for marketing 101, anybody has a captive audience, you know it's going to be high prices. You pay for a sub in a grocery store, it costs you $4. You pay for it in a truck stop, it's $12 for your captive audience, right? So I understand how they feel. I understand because I've been there and I'm the one laying out the $12 for the $4 sandwich. I get it. However, at the same time, that truck stop or property member is going to turn to paid parking. There is nothing I can do about it. That's capitalism, captive audience. That's that's what they're going to do. The only fortunate part of all of that incident is that the property member chose Truck Parking Club to back up the driver and be the advocate in his corner. Now, that property member could choose another company that I can promise you will never treat that driver as well as this company will treat that driver. Um, I promise you that. And and the other additional benefits that you get just from being truck parking club, you don't get with the other ones. So again, when people, there's different reasons, uh, people are upset about paid parking, but then I want you to think about that read. If I let someone park on your property, you know, we opened it, said, hey, you know, do you think they should be able to park on your property for free? No, we're opening brand new spaces than never before on personal property. 
So of course you want to get paid for that. Are you going to make a fortune? I don't know. Depends on how big you're going to get. But it's a value add. And that's the way I see it. And when I actually talk to the drivers and we can seem to understand, they understand the value of Truck Parking Club. And I don't want everybody to use it every day. If you don't have the need to use Truck Parking Club, don't. We're okay with that. That's fine. We are a nice tool to have on your tool belt. For God forbid a driver stuck out in the middle of the night, you got messed over by the shipper, the shipper you know, wasn't able to see you, and you're sitting there and you're out of hours, Truck Parking Club's a great, great tool to have in your tool belt. What, um, no, yeah, that all makes, that all makes sense. Um, good stuff. Uh, I guess last question, we'll end on this. What, uh, what are you excited for? Like, where do you see this going? Like, what, 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 um, what do you think the future holds? Uh, both for your team and for the company? That's a really great question. I think about that every day. I see truckparkingclub.com going international. I see us changing the industry. I actually hope that we change the industry. I realize that for company drivers have to lay out of their pocket for a $20 parking space, that's it shouldn't be. It should be a part of the normal course of business to offer parking. I see us changing the industry slowly but surely where the drivers are treated better because we're going to set the standard. And that I really like. Um, I see everybody on my team with, a, with an opportunity to grow, uh, which is really great because we have Evan behind us that offers us, you know, and behind us every step of the way. If we want to get more education, we want to learn something, he's really behind us on that. It's a feedback kind of company too. We listen to our drivers make changes. We listen to our staff to make changes. It, this is an incredible, I'm going to tell you a little secret, Reed. I'm 54 years old. I'm an old lady. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I am an old lady. I have been, had all different jobs my entire life, right? And I have to tell you, this is the best I have ever been in my entire life and I intend to retire from here without a doubt and that I would I stand behind this company and I look at it starting out this little shack and turning into this empire state building I see this as being the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow this is the best place the best happiest place the most motivating place for drivers, for property members, for our staff. And like I said, I see us going totally international, truckparkingclub.com, Germany. You know, I, I see it. I see it. And and I am just honored and privileged to be a part of it. Yeah, cool. Great. Um, it's, well, I can say that just from my standpoint, joining the team that I've, um, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for what, what you've managed to do and how you've managed to reinvent yourself to be, you know, the leader of, of arguably the most important team in the company. Um, and, and I think it's um, it's a pretty cool story that, you know, as time goes on, we'll continue to tell it. And, and obviously the company will speak for itself. So pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Um, appreciate you. Appreciate you um, sitting down to do this. And uh, yeah, we'll probably do it again. Um, but uh, maybe next time I'll have some other questions, but I think this is good for now. So I appreciate it, Tracy. No, no, thanks. Hey, man, I'll do it in time. All right. See ya. See ya, bye.